Hi everyone, greetings from Laxo. Today we'll see the mortuary temple of Seti I. Although well preserved, little known and little visited by tourists, underestimated, just like its builder. Let's go! Seti was so much more than only the father of Ramesses the Great, one of the most successful and powerful rulers of the Bronze Age world. Let's learn more about Seti the Great. Haven't subscribed to my channel yet? Please do it now! The mortuary temple of Seti I, also called the Mansion of Millions of Years, is the northernmost temple of ancient Thebes, located about 3 km from the Romassium. During the times of Seti, the village was called Hefet Her Nebes, which means in front of its lord and the temple was named presumably by the pharaoh himself, Glorious Seti in the west of Thebes. Although structures surrounding the main temple are either completely gone or in a bad state of preservation, the temple proper made of sandstone still looks wonderful and is designed on a triple layout the hypostyle hall in the middle, a section dedicated to the solar cult to the right, and royal to the left. A beautiful portico, 52 meters long with 10 lotus columns, marks the entrance to the temple. Though the temple was built as a monument for the funeral cult of Seti I, the walls behind the columns show mainly Seti's son, Ramesses II, making offerings to various gods. Also, the cartouches above each column belong to Ramesses II. The temple, besides being the mortuary temple of Seti I, was dedicated to the king of the gods, Amun-Ra, and Ramesses I, Seti's father, who didn't rule long enough to erect the mortuary temple for himself. The inscription on the wall reads, He made it as his monument for his father, Osiris Ramesses I Triumphant, making for him a house of millions of years. Seti I, the son of the first pharaoh of the 19th dynasty and Queen Sita. His name, Seti Meren Ptah, means Man of Set, beloved of Ptah. He inherited a kingdom weakened internally and externally by Akhenaten's ruinous revolution and the short lived, chaotic rule of his successors. He undertook the work of reconstruction initiated by Horemheb, as his father Ramesses I ruled only for two years. Like the godfather of the 19th dynasty Horemheb, and Ramesses I said he was a military man. He bore the titles troop commander, head archer and, like his father before, a vizier. He commanded the army during his father's brief reign. After Ramesses' death around 1290 BCE, Seti took the pharaoh name, Menemetra Seti, established is the justice of Re. He married, as could be expected, the daughter of an officer. Her name was Tuya.
The temple can be referred to as the precursor of the Ramazid mortuary temples, as it was the first temple to feature the royal palace with the window of appearance and magazines on its premises. It's said that Seti I moved here, built a residence just next to the construction site to personally supervise works on the temple. Nevertheless, he did not live to see it finished. Its construction was completed by his son. There's a quite controversial theory claiming that the Ramasium was also built by Seti I, and this was his mortuary temple, whereas the temple we're now in was dedicated mainly to his father, Ramesses I. It wouldn't be surprising to find out that Ramesses the Great had attributed to himself yet another construction of his predecessors. The hypostyle hall features six lotus columns with well-preserved carvings, depicting on both left and right walls Seti I, chiefly with the moon, but also with other gods like Mut, Hathor or Montu. Decorations on the eastern wall show Ramesses II among gods of the Theban triad. There are six chambers adjacent to the hypostyle hall. Three on the left served the royal cult, a chamber slash decorated passage to the section dedicated to Ramesses I, a chamber for the statue of a royal car, and a chamber for the royal bark. Whereas three rooms on the right display pharaohs making offerings to the gods, joining them in the afterlife. Seti. In the minds of Egyptians, Seti became the great ruler who initiated the era of order and restoration. The reign of this warrior pharaoh begins with a military campaign in Canaan. He suppressed the uprising of the Shasu Bedouins. According to some researchers, they were Hebrews, as in the hieroglyphic records they referred to as Shasu of Ichwe, which may be the oldest record of the name of Yahweh. At the same time, around 1294 BCE, Seti suppressed a revolt of the Aramean coalition supported by the Hittites. In a victorious march, Seti reached as far as the mountains of Lebanon, restoring Egyptian rule over Palestine and Phoenician cities. We're now in the part of the temple which Seti dedicated to the funerary cult of his father. It covers almost one-sixth of the temple proper. During the fourth campaign in the north, Seti captures the Amorite city of Kadesh and drives the Hittites out of Canaan and Egyptian Syria. He annexed the kingdom of Amuru, hitherto vassal of the Hittites, which belonged to Egypt during the reign of Amenhotep III. The Hittites didn't attempt these territories until after Seti's death. Seti also successfully secured the Nile Delta by defeating the Libyans advancing from the west. In his eighth regnal year, he sends an army under the command of his son Ramesses to crush the rebellion in Nubia. To the west of the Hypostyle Hall were five chambers. Three in the middle naturally served as shrines for the sacred barks of the Theban triad, Mut, Amun and Khonsu, and would have been used during the beautiful Feast of the Valley. 
The southernmost room was a chapel dedicated to Ptah and easternmost to Osiris. From the bark shrine of Amun, where the pedestal is still in situ, one could reach the Holy of Holies, which is kind of an extension of the Amun's bark shrine and features dozens of offering scenes. Seti I was also a great builder. He restored buildings and monuments devastated by Akhenaten. Continuing the policies of Horemheb and his father, Seti consistently usurped Tutankhamun's buildings by renovating them. It effectively covered the traces of the Amarna period. Of course, such renewals were a common practice. They allowed to leave the mark in the shortest possible time, placing cartouches in visible representative places. Now in the southern courtyard, which almost two and a half thousand years ago was a lavish garden. Today there remains only a sacred well, which was connected to the temple by a sloping ramp. It symbolized the sources of the Nile and was believed to have been a dwelling of Upper and Lower Egypt fertility gods. Of course, it was Seti who erected a gigantic great hypostyle hall in the Temple of the Moon in Karnak. You can see it in my first Karnak episode, link in the description. But Ramesses II completed its construction and decorations, often usurping some of his father's reliefs. In fact, some of Ramesses the Great's most colossal structures were his father's designs. We have to remember that it was Seti's reign, his victorious campaigns, stable and competent rule, that allowed Ramesses II to rival Amenhotep III as the greatest builder of the new kingdom. Seti is also famous for his great temple of Osiris in Abydos, which he began to rebuild around 1300 BCE. This is one of my favorites, I'll show it to you another time. Their reconstruction, of course, served to legitimize the power of the new dynasty, which, while rebuilding the former power of Egypt, focuses on the holy city of Abydos, the cradle of the pharaohs and the ancient capital of Scorpion and Narmer. It was during the reign of Seti and his son who completed the temple that Abydos flourished as a great religious center. Seti also commissioned a construction of a great temple in Memphis, his capital. In the Nile Delta, he built his summer palace, Pyramuses, where his son, the future Ramesses the Great, was brought up and will move the capital there in the future. Seti ruled from the north, probably to be closer to vassal territories and the hostile Hittite Empire. He is also credited with the realization of another great project shown in reliefs on the wall of the Great Hypostyle Hall in Karnak, a military road to Palestine, known as the Ways of Horus, the 220 km road along which he built a series of fortresses and wells is one of the oldest routes running through the northern Sinai, from today's Suez Canal to Gaza. Originally, the temple was surrounded by a fortified wall, measuring 124 by 162 meters and was probably around 11 meters high. 
a quick glimpse on the remains of the magazines. We're in the temple's northeastern corner in a sun court, entirely decorated by Ramesses II. And originally, this today empty square featured ten columns and an altar. The niches you can see right now contained figures of the pharaoh. Of course, Seti is most famous for his tomb, the most beautiful and longest in the Valley of the Kings, almost 140 meters long and 62 meters deep, as well as for his incredibly preserved mummy, which I had the chance to admire in the Cairo Museum before moving it to Giza in a spectacular way during the Pharaoh's Golden Parade last year. This is of course a topic for another episode, when I finally managed to film his tomb. As in any other temple in Western Thebes, the entrance to the temple was from the east, and of course, it wasn't a plain entryway. To the temple led a processional route, two pylons and an avenue of sphinxes, crossing two courtyards. The pylons, as well as sphinxes, are long gone. The pylons have fallen apart as they were made of unburnt mud brick, and sphinxes were most likely reused. By the way, centuries later, during the Roman period, the temple premises were used as workshops for artisans. Before the sunset, I'd like to show you part of the remains of the largest mortuary temple in the western Thebes. The largest colossi of standing Amenhotep III, 100 tons, 12 meters high, they flanked the giant north gate of the temple precinct. There's no trace of both the stone gate and the mud brick pylons. And the statues were reconstructed and raised again only in 2014. Amenhotep III was one of the most prominent pharaohs of the 18th dynasty. Egypt of Amenhotep, who was called the Magnificent or the Great, is the pinnacle of artistic, economic and political achievements. Today, Amenhotep is still underestimated, overshadowed by the more famous son Akhenaten or grandson Tutankhamun. About 150 years after its construction, around 1200 BCE, the temple was destroyed by an earthquake. Its ruins were a source of building material for many Theban structures. In 27 BCE, another earthquake completed the act of destruction. Two. Gigantic quartzite sandstone statues measure 18 meters in height and weigh about 720 tons each. Named by the Greeks the Colossi of Memnon, a mythical hero son of the Ethiopian king Thetanus and the goddess Eos. In Homer's Iliad he fought for Troy but was slain by Achilles. In his first century book, Geographica, Strabo described his journey to Egypt with the prefect Elius Gallus. In the section on Thebes, Strabo described two colossal sculptures, one of which emanated a noise in the early morning hours. He described the sound as a slight blow of unknown source, and writes, whether it came from the base or from the colossus, or was made on purpose by one of the men, I'm unable to positively assert. The statue has become famous already in antiquity and was known as the one that sang in the morning sun. In the 
the 2nd century, the Roman geographer Pausanias described the sounds as that of a harp or a lyre when a string has been broken. Some ancient tourists swore that the statue not only speaks, but also moves its lips. The Emperor Hadrian supposedly was listening to the singing Colossi for four days. More than a hundred Greek and Latin inscriptions were found in the lower parts of the Colossi. Already in the time of Strabo, one of the Colossi lost its head and torso, which lay cracked at the foot of the statue. The emperor Septimus Severus from the 3rd century CE renovated the statues, for example, ordered the broken half of the Colossus to be reattached. The restoration eventually silenced the statues, and they lost the interest of travelers at that time. Obviously, the remains of this temple deserve a separate episode. I will return soon to Qom el Heltan and tell you more about Amenhotep. There were many indications that it was on Amenhotep, the last of the great Thutmosis, that the Golden Age of Egypt would end. But then Seti appeared in the historical arena. Thanks to him, the restorer of the new kingdom, Ramesset Egypt once again became the greatest superpower of the Late Bronze Age. Thank you for watching! To stay tuned, please tap the subscribe button and help my channel grow by liking, commenting and sharing my content with your friends. If you like this episode, you will certainly enjoy another playlist from Greece and Turkey. Links down below. See you on another ancient site.